have been here since uh, five years since they've opened. Miss Ralston opened the school. Yeah. yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what do you guys feel? Um, and you're both individuals. Um, is your biggest contribution contribution to the ongoing effect and the growth of the school? Um, well, from my perspective, uh, it'll be going uh, almost two years in January. I've seen tremendous growth, just like we were talking about, in our ability to, we've built capacity here at Pritchardville. We can serve our AIM students, we can serve our ESOL students, students uh, across the continuum of, of learning needs. We've made huge uh, leaps and bounds in terms of building our overall capacity to ensure that every child is successful. Mayor Beth? I agree. Um, I think overall just the support of the students throughout the years has been one of the biggest things that um, I have con con contributed but um, you know being being an assistant principal and administrator um, up until now I feel like the last two years I have really grown as an administrator as well as a learner um, and because of Brenda um, I think one of the biggest like she said one of the biggest successes is the um, the RTI process and helping each individual student, not just a couple of students, but every single child in this building is getting the instruction um, at the level that um, is needed for them. So um, I just, I've seen that from where it started to where it is now and it's just impressive the, how far this building has come with helping each and every child grow. Our focus on data, when Mary Beth talks about the response to intervention, is um, huge now. Um, we are a data-driven school where our data teams meet regularly. When you uh, see small groups receiving intervention during power-up time, they're receiving a research-based intervention with fidelity, with a weekly progress monitor. So uh, that is huge when we talk about building capacity for the overall school. Um, what's one thing that you've implemented that you're most proud of? Um, well, we've got a couple things. It's hard to just pick one thing because we, I mean, we're just we're, we're kind of on a roll. One. But um, one thing, that, I mean, I think that um, in, in terms of our overall growth, and again, I connect it back to building capacity, to be able to offer engineering. Uh, as a related arts to every student K through five, which previously engineering was uh, focused on the AIM students. Um, a lot of the the educational practices that we that were just part of the AIMS program, we have rolled out uh, together. We right? rolled out to the entire school, and you know teachers have been receptive about that. Parents are excited. Our students are excited. The whole project based. Uh, focus uh, with our engineering uh, overarching theme every quarter we, it changes uh, the concept changes this quarter was the concept of change second quarter it's the concept of power and everything we do uh, in core content areas has an interconnectedness uh, students feel that the teachers feel that they are able to collaborate with our engineering teachers our media um, computer folk everybody working together and um, helping students develop projects that help them develop skill sets, which we connect back to what we're preparing them for when they leave Pritchardville and go to middle school and beyond. Um, I agree 100% with that. Um, also, one of the things I feel like we've implemented and, and that we've also grown in, the, in an area of is the fact that um, common planning and um, we're working towards building those PLCs and um, you know, it's not just meeting and going over a bunch of, you know, check, checklist items. It's now becoming teachers planning together, um, looking at their data, not only just um, every six weeks in a data team, but it's also looking at individual formative assessments and looking at where students are so that we can further look. When we meet for data teams, we can really um, look further in, into what students are doing and how they're growing. Uh, what is something you're hoping to implement in the near future? Well, we're not, um, it's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I think it's important for us to continue to enhance what we're doing. So it's not so much about the flavor of the month, but really honing our skills, just as Mary Beth said with the, with the whole data piece. Uh, we now have an electronic data notebook 
that shows you can pull up the history of a student to see did he or she have intervention in first grade? What was that in intervention? What was the length of the time? To be able to harness the technology that allows us to pull up the data, um, that's something we're going to continue to refine. And, and Mary Beth uh, really took the lead on that. And our teachers, it's something that they have referred to that we'll utilize in our data team meetings. Um, I think the whole RTI process, you know, refining that, making sure that we're able to get all of the components of a level literacy intervention in a 30 minute power up time. So uh, with our engineering, um, we instead of doing the engineering expo this fall, we've switched it to a project based learning expo so that we're bringing in examples of projects across all content areas. Uh, we'll continue to have our STEAM event. Uh, just as Mary Beth said, we're going to continue to make sure we have a master schedule that allows teachers to have those common planning time opportunities. So uh, we're definitely headed in a great direction and, and we're just really fine tuning a lot of the things that we've uh, started our journey on. Right, and just to build on what she said, the. Um with the engineering component, we're looking at adding science mm -hmm. into that document because um, we, you know, we're looking at the engineering piece, but we're also looking at how engineering and science can be brought together, and then um, really putting a focus on, okay, what is it we're doing in each individual unit? So, and adding that to that document. So, I see in the future us continue to add to that document in each individual area and forming Pritchardville's own curriculum. Granted, we have the district curriculum, and we are going by that, but it, it will be a Pritchardville curriculum, so to speak. And then on t on, for the RTI process, I see um, we're really focused on reading right now, and I think now that we're implementing, we're piloting already, mm -hmm. I think that that's the math component of that is going to help us with the RTI process. It's going to be the same as it is for reading. We're going to be able to see where kids are. We're going to be able to um, actually give them interventions. Again, progress monitoring their, progress monitor their um, growth. And then also we are looking at behavior. We do have the check-in, check-out, and adding that to our data notebook as well. One of the things you were talking about earlier before we turn on the camera, you are talking about the extra stuff for teachers that you guys have been doing in schools. I think that is an awesome thing, especially when we're talking about the future, like the question I was asking. The future is based on how well your teachers perform. If they're not knowledge, and you're talking about, you call them um, trainings, if they're not knowledge, those trainings are all about building for the future, and I totally agree with that. I don't know if you guys had anything to elaborate on some of those trainings. Um, well, the trainings are connected to what we're doing instructionally, um, because we want to see research-based best practices. For example, I think we had uh, touched on Lucy Calkins is our writing program that we use. So first-year teachers, you all are getting ready to eventually start in when you come into um, a pretty, uh, Beaufort County School, you're expected to implement Lucy Calkins uh, with Fidelity, but you need su support and training for that. So a first year teacher's needs are very different from a teacher who's been uh, implementing Lucy Calkins for two or three years, so we have that differentiation with our trainings, and uh, it's not a one-size-fits-all, um, and we feel good about that because we should have that level of differentiation. Uh, technology support, uh, you know, some people are all along a, a continuum with their technology skills. So we have a technology focus, we have the instructional focus, we, uh, Mary Beth talked about our check-in, check-out for our positive behavior supports and intervention. We offer training um, so teachers thoroughly understand what that tier two support looks like. What do I need to do in the classroom and then how do I uh, access the tier two support if needed. Uh, it's, there's a lot of research that shows that teachers who don't receive support leave the profession within the first couple years. And so when we hire a teacher at Pritchardville, we're, we're investing in, in you. And we are up front with that. And um, that's why we offer the, the variety and uh, trainings that we do. And I think, too, in order for us to know what the next step is, of course, that is us being involved in every aspect of this building, um, and we are. And I think, too, um, just knowing, you know, we know where our teachers are and what they need and what the next step is. And so each individual year, our PD, like this year we're doing curriculum compacting, 
Um, and so we're taking it, they don't realize it, but we're taking it one step at a time, on, you know, with an understanding of this is where we want to go, this is where we want to be. Not throwing everything at them at once, but continuing to build to grow their stamina and their learn and, and produce, you know, 21st century teachers because you don't want to just get stagnant. And, um, you know, that's how you continue to grow and learn is, is to be involved. And so we, we want to make sure that each year it's something new and exciting. You know, they're, they're excited about the professional development, and that's great to see. Awesome. Anything else you guys want to add? Um, we didn't give you this question, but I'm going to throw this in. With the, I've noticed that the classrooms are uh, extremely diverse in Pritchardville. So how do you still remain culturally, I guess, responsive in such a limited, diverse group? Um, are you talking about the cultural diversity just in general at the school? I think it's important for our teachers to have a level of cultural sensitivity when they're presenting information. Uh, whether that's through the curriculum, whether that's ex you know expanding opportunities for students learning, studying other cultures, um, I think that's something that we're obligated. Where you don't ha in a school where you don't have as much diversity, because you want students to be culturally culturally sensitive, because that's the world we live in, you know. And and I think it's the right thing to do. I I, I agree with with her 100%. It's it's funny because I've been here since. The school open and and um, it, it has changed. Um, we're, we're, we have a heavy um, his, Hispanic population um, and our, our African American population has grown as well. So it's becoming more and more diverse. Um, but it's just it's just changed. It's grown and changed throughout the years ever since I've been here. So, but you know, I don't think as far as um, we're we're constantly you know we're constantly looking at all of our students. There's a, there's not one student that's treated any different than the other. We when we get into those data team meetings, every child is looked at as as an individual and what he or she needs. Wonderful. Thank you, ladies. Hey, Thank you. It. it was fun. Good luck with the, yeah, good luck with the project. I